Welcome! This is my review of Mobile Suit in Action, The O. And welcome to the review of the MSIA, The O. I'm going to start off the review with a size comparison, or a couple size comparisons. Uh, first off here is the O MSIA compared to the Robot Spirits GNX3. Uh, so you can get an idea of how big this guy is. Uh, next up, here is a the Destiny Gundam. This is the Mobile Suit in Action Destiny Gundam, as you can see here. It gives you a good idea of the size of the MSIA the O. And finally, just for fun, uh, I actually would compare it to a 1-144, uh, the CeraVe. And you can see there, even compared to like a 1-100 kit, he is pretty big. Well, let me go ahead and stand up uh, the CeraVe straight like that. That's probably a better size comparison. But yeah, you can see this guy is quite big. So, next up, I'm going to do a weight comparison. And I don't know if anybody has done a weight comparison before in a review, but uh, I'm going to do it. And uh, the reason being is this guy is pretty hefty. So let's go ahead and take a look at the weight comparison. And welcome to the weight comparison. So first, I'm going to take the Robot Spirits GNX3 and put him on the scale. And you can see he's very light. Uh, next up, I will put on the Mobile Suit in Action, Destiny Gundam. Yeah, about the same. And also, the 1-144 high-grade Cerevi Gundam. So he's uh, heavier than the two uh, action figures. And finally, last but certainly not least, here is the O, the Big Mamma Jamma. And he comes in just over a half pound. So let's take a look at articulation. First thing I'll show you is this fin here. I'm not sure exactly what it does in the actual uh, anime, but it goes up and down like this. And this piece does come uh, detached from the figure and packaged separately, so you do have to just insert it into this little slot there. And head articulation is really good all the way around. It's on a ball joint, left and right, you can see uh, back and forward like that. Uh, now the shoulder joints on my figure out of the box were extremely tight, uh, but of course as you work the ball joint it will become loosened over time. So uh, shoulder articulation, well you got the shoulder armor here which articulates up and down like that. And as I mentioned before, the actual shoulder itself right here is on a ball joint. And the arm can go forward, it can go, whoops go back and it can go out to the side uh, about that far if you go any farther it's gonna pop off the ball joint um, you can see here you got swivel at the upper arm the arm can bend at the elbow to this degree you do want to be careful of these red conduits if you put too much stress on them they're likely to come out of their sockets or warp or break off completely the bend is achieved using this joint right there. And as you can see, the upper arm and the lower arm are connected via a ball joint, which is right there. You have the hands are on a ball joint. You do have uh, ab articulation. You can see right there, side to side, as you can see, a little bit back and forth. Uh, and then you do have waist articulation. Although, as you would imagine, it's going to be hindered by the side skirts. Now, the side skirts here are attached to the waist, so there really is no articulation for the side skirts. Therefore, this is all really uh, the articulation you get at the waist. Uh, I could force it, but I don't want to because, again, you have these fantastic uh, conduits here in the red that uh, run from the front. Uh, to the back there, so I don't want to risk stressing that or straining it, but you know, you've got articulation there. Uh, the front skirts go forward, as you can see there. 
like that, which of course allows for leg articulation. Uh, back skirt doesn't really move. It looks like it, uh, you know, it just, it's only moving because there's a little bit of play in the plastic, but you know, you got that motion there. So you're not going to get the leg to go at, uh, excuse me, you're not going to have the leg go back very far. Uh, speaking of the leg, uh, you can see that the hip is on a ball joint. So the leg can go forward, and as I mentioned before, the leg can go back just, you know, very small amount. Uh, leg can go out to the side about that degree. Um, and there really is no swivel here at all, but you do have leg, or, uh, excuse me, you do have uh, knee articulation. And again, you don't want to stress it too much because you got these uh, red conduits again. Uh, this one's attached to the top of the thigh and to uh, to right right there where the knee is at. So um, now the armor here, this armor here and here, they're both on ball joints, and this particular piece here on both legs, they came uh, packaged detached from the figure. So you you got to put these on the ball joint when you get the figure out of packaging for the first time. So ball joint here, ball joint here. Uh, this is on a ball joint here as well. Uh, it's attached here at the uh, foot. But yeah, you got uh, you can see back there is a ball joint. So what I'm going to do, and what I'm going to do is actually give you a better look at the leg. I'm going to go ahead and take off the armor here, as well as remove the foot. Now the foot here actually is on a ball joint. So you got uh, side to side, you know, <coughs> excuse me, side to side shimmy like that and you know a little bit of this as well but it's actually attached to a ball joint so I'm going to go ahead and remove the armor and show you the leg in detail so with the armor removed you can see the inner workings of the leg and the detail that Bandai put into this leg very very nicely detailed uh, I want to point out again the articulation at the knee. You really don't get a lot of articulation. You can see how here this is about the range because of these conduits uh, being attached here and here. But uh, yeah, you can see where the where the armor was attached here to the ball joint here. And what's cool about it is there's actually a ball joint, a working ball joint right there. So you can get the uh, the ball joint working there. Now what's really cool as well is there's actually a functional joint here. If we take a look at uh, this right there, wow. This is an action figure, but it has a very nice mechanical detail. And this is really stiff, so I really had to examine this closely and really put some time into seeing if this actually moved. And to my delight and surprise, it did. And as you can see there, it works quite nicely. A um, lot of nice uh, piston detail. Even though the pistons don't work, they're detailed into the leg, which is really nice. So yeah, just a close look at the leg and the really uh, the the thought that Bandai put into designing this leg for this MSIA action figure. So, for accessories, I will start off showing you the beam rifle, and it's a very nicely detailed beam rifle with some silver paint apps and nicely uh, sculpted molding in the actual rifle itself. You got these little conduits here that are painted yellow, and you do get two hands for the beam rifle handle, as you can see there. Uh, the rifle itself is pretty stiff, as you can see, it can flex though. It's a soft or semi-soft plastic. Uh, so you got that beam rifle looking pretty good. And I usually don't show the beam rifle first, but that's because you get four beams and the corresponding beam handles that go with them, as you can see right there. So very nice. You got the hands that can hold the beam handles. Now you do get the sub arms. And if you know anything about the O, you'll know what these are for. So this is really cool. You get this feature in the actual um, action figure. So taking a closer look at the sub arm, you can see there's detailing on the inside of the arm. And there is articulation at the wrist, articulation at the joint. And the joint itself does 
bend. So to attach the subarm, all you got to do is lift up the skirt here. There actually is a connector piece. If you take a look right there, and what you're going to do is you're going to attach that like so. And you should hear a solid snap like that. So once you insert the subarms into the front skirt armor and replace the closed fist hands with the beam saber holding hands, you got this awesome effect. Now one thing to note is the ball joints connecting the front skirts uh, over time will become loose. They're actually kind of loose now so if you kind of touch them they will tend to fall down and the whole thing will droop as far as the two sub arms. But overall this is a very very nice effect and kudos to Bandai for actually including the sub arms and the total of four beams. Now it's my understanding, having watched Prime 92's review of the Master Grade the O, the Master Grade the O apparently does not include a total of four beams. It only includes two. So shame on you Bandai for not including four beams in the Master Grade, but nonetheless I'm glad they decided to include the four beams with the mobile suit in action figure. So if you take a close look at this figure, it is very, very nicely detailed. For one thing, you do have the figure panel lined. You can see there in the skirting armor, as well as throughout the actual action figure. Uh, some more panel lined there. And moving on to the actual color details, well, let's take a look at the head sculpt first. You got the mono eye in pink and you've got some greens. I guess these are thrusters if I understand correctly. I'm sure somebody will tell me if I'm wrong, but these uh, green details here. Uh, and then you got the really nicely detailed uh, conduits, red going from front to back, uh, on the legs as well, uh, and as well as on the arms, as you can see right there. And uh, moving to the back, you, know, you can see some more panel lining and you've got these nice big thrusters painted with green surrounded by a dark blue. Uh, you've got some silver throughout the figure like right there for example, there and there. Uh, on the back skirt, uh, some more silver here on the side skirt as you can see. Uh, you've got some more silver here. I guess this is kind of a thruster or a vent. Uh, some green along here as well. And uh, as I mentioned before, the leg itself is fantastically detailed in terms of mechanical detail. Um, you've got some more green here. And last but certainly not least, on the bottom of the feet you have some fantastic silver paint apps. So final thoughts on Mobile Suit in Action The O. This is a fantastic, fantastic figure. Bandai did a great job in engineering this action figure. I like the fact that you get the four beams and you don't get those in the Master Grade. I find that quite interesting. And it's just a very well detailed figure. It's got a lot of weight to it. It's got a lot of bulk to it and a lot of detail. Now the reason I chose to get the action figure as opposed to the model kit if we're looking at the Master Grade model kit, for example, the Master Grade model kit of the O is around $120. And, you know, I wasn't at the time that interested in building the O model kit. But after having the action figure in my hands, I am actually interested in building the model kit. Now, that's not to say that I'm going to go out there and buy the $120 Master Grade model kit. Uh, I'm going to see if it comes down to price or, or whatnot, but uh, it just be just just for the fact that I've actually uh, got to you know basically play with this action figure really makes me want to buy the 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 master grade. As far as the figure itself, thirty dollars, which is I think really a, a really good deal because if I'm looking right now on eBay, there are two mobile suit in action. The O's. One goes for a buy it now at 
$54.99. The other one goes for a buy it now at $69.99. And that's not including shipping. So I think I got a great deal on this figure. Really happy with it. And it's a recommended buy if you can find a good deal on it. Uh, you can find it for relatively cheap or if you can afford the asking price that they're, that they're asking on eBay. All right. Well, thanks for watching. This has been my review of the Mobile Suit in Action, the O.